Hello, everyone. Welcome to Wild Woman podcast again in the, I was going to say, in the lead up to Easter. I'm just thinking about that now. Um, and I have a lovely guest with me today, Laura Logan from the UK. Uh, really, really, it's just been lovely. We've been chatting there for a few minutes and I just keep marveling all the time at these wonderful women who are just showing up in my life and on this podcast and it's sort of turning into something I don't know what it doesn't really matter but I just know that something special happens for me in all every single one of these conversations and I hope the same for everybody who listens this is um, why I do it and it's just another side of it is just meeting all of these women if anyone is in any doubt that you know, we have something to share of, you know, a value every single woman person does. And we often don't realize it. So it's a privilege for me to talk to women who maybe haven't spoken publicly before. It's a real gift. I'm really grateful um, because I think it takes great bravery and courage to to come out publicly and just talk about yourself and life. And also, thank you, Laura. I'm really, really grateful that you're here and it's lovely to see you. And hear you. Oh well, thank you so much. Yeah, it's a real privilege to come and join you on 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 what you do. I've um discovered you through a friend, and I think what you're doing is an absolute amazing, amazing gift. So I'm I feel very grateful and very privileged to join you. Thank you. Oh, thank you, thank you, Laura. Um, so Laura, maybe I'll let you introduce yourself firstly, and maybe just talk a little bit about what you do and and the work that you do, and then we might go back and talk about how how you got here <laughs> and uh yeah let's just talk about yeah what you've what you've learned along the way as well but yeah maybe start there if that's okay yeah so so what what I am doing what I've I'm I'm a holistic therapist of quite some years now um and I've basically spent the last perhaps up to 20 years just concentrating on on healing and spreading healing I think I have a natural instinct in me that wants to help and to heal and to spread that as much as I can um, so what I am doing currently um, is working on connection and emotions so um, hosting women's circles um, to get people together to connect to share um, <clears throat> to empower them basically to know that they don't go through things alone um, and that we are as emotional beings affected by like, the cycle of the moon and the energies so it's often the case that we can all gather during one moon and everybody's really emotional <laughs> and um then we can leave that circle realizing that it wasn't just me. I um, we were feeling the energies together, and now I know that I'm not not crazy or not alone. But we are a collective, and and we do experience things together. Um, and I'm sorry, I have to say I could have done with you this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's been a, it's been oh an intense God. weekend. Yeah. This weekend has been <laughs> whoa. <laughs> yeah, Off the charts. Been, yeah. Off the charts. I've noticed as well, when we start sharing in circles, there's often two trajectories that women will take. Either they can get a bit swamped by the waves or you can actually ride the waves. And, and it's nice to have the both energies present because if we get a couple of people who, as we all do sometimes, feel like they're falling apart a little bit, that's the beauty of gathering because mm. we've got a couple of people there who are actually riding those waves with super strength coming out and then they can step in and really hold the space um, um, as as a collective, I think is what we're what we're meant to do. Mm -hmm. um, a big That's driving so force for doing these circles and connecting, and I do a lot outside in nature as well. Um, is um, as a product of the last few years with all the restrictions and lockdowns, a lot of people saw being isolated, um, and it breaks my heart that some people didn't make it through those dark periods when they were isolated. So that drives me. Um, in a, almost in a fighting energy sometimes to to reach people and and just reassure people that you're you're not alone, uh, and and we experience these energies together, um, and I feel almost emotional now at just mm. looking back at some of the some of, some of the comments and some of the women who um, are just 
soaring actually as a result of just the simple connection um, but the empowerment that comes through that um, and it's been a privilege for me to see these women rise stand mm. into their power um, mm. yeah it brings tears to my eyes just yeah. that how ha how happy and and yes I do pass my wisdom on in the circle um, but a lot of these women are listening to their voice and just listening to the right voice and, and acting on, on what they feel is right. And with that support in the circle that comes with the circle, they, they probably have uh, more courage to take those first steps that can be really scary sometimes. Mm. You know, because lo lots of what we hear in the circle are, are traumas coming out, which can be relationship traumas, which can be um, back to childhood dynamics and with parents. And um, so lots of emotionally tender hurdles to overcome and release and heal. Um, mm. So that's why these these victories now are so joyous for me, because the hurdles that these women are overcoming are are massive and not even just in this lifetime either but for for you know generations so mm. it, it just it fills me with joy to to see these women spreading their wings now it's it's <laughs> indescribable almost to the, the joy mm. yeah I can I can feel it like just from when you started talking and how so did you just did you start the circles just during the last few years was it sort of you just felt I really need to come together with other women or how did that evolve into you holding circles? um so that might be a good place for me to sort of talk about my journey so mm -hmm. far here to this point mm -hmm. um way back in 2007 perhaps 2006 I qualified as a holistic therapist which was to give um Swedish massage aromatherapy reflexology and nutritional awareness um and because I have an instinctual want to heal um, and better people and then help people better themselves, I was getting people come to me with, with bad backs. And um, massage is great for a bad back, but it's not always necessarily the cure. So therefore, I went on to develop yoga, teaching yoga um, to help support people with their core and their strength and their alignment. Um, and through yoga, I discovered... Um, Yes, the sort of uh, the emotional release effect that comes with yoga and meditation and still in the mind, uh, which is where my awareness came that the physical and the emotional are very much linked. And so my journey through being a holistic therapist using massage to using um postural alignment and emotional release um, sort of grew from there and then we got to the point where I was thinking, well, emotional release during, say, the time of restrictions and lockdowns was really important. And when you're restricted emotionally, people do s tend to feel suffocated, um, carrying the burdens of the emotions that come come up when you're when you're too still. Mm -hmm. So that led to a need uh, to counter this pandemic we were looking at of um, emotional isolation. And um, so gathering people together became important to me to share their experiences. And I had experienced um, attending women's circles in the past quite some years, and I've valued them so, so greatly, more than I realized I, I would have at first. Um, I, I kind of discovered women's circles a bit tentatively, going, oh, I don't know if this is for me or not. But um realizing the profound connection and that time to be with women um when you're you know in your in your home life with partners and children and work lives actually having that that time to be in a circle um where you're you're like-minded you're you're the same almost but different um and and you're there for understood in a greater depth and even your closest partner, you, you can try and explain something to them and they're not, you're not quite sure that they really understand you. But to sit amongst women where you can just say something and they just totally understand you, it's like, it's like the world's greatest medicine. And um, you, get a, you, you experience a great sense of release when you feel that sensation. Mm. Um, 
so yes that was my my journey really to to develop where I am today hosting sharing circles um, and of course I have to mention nature as well I, I work in nature as much as I can during the during the more summer seasons um, we just hosted an equinox release uh, circle on the beach actually we went to the ocean and it was it was fantastic it was it was a really beautiful afternoon we were blessed with um, beautiful sun even though we had torrential rain in the morning and torrential rain that night we had a window of glorious sun which was beautiful um, and we moved and we shared and we drummed and we sang uh, next to the ocean. And it was, again, the ocean and nature, I consider great healers, especially again in our life, our lifestyles here where we spend a lot of time indoors with electric lights on and we get a little bit severed from our mother nature. Um, so returning to nature is um, something I'm also passionate about. I, I consider nature the healer, the greatest mm -hmm. healer. So mm -hmm. holding circles, holding nurturing days out in nature is something I'm I'm passionate about, yeah. Oh, you got me there when you say, when you mention nature, mention drumming, mention all of that. It's just like, you know, <clears throat> what sort of woke a lot of that up for me in the last few years. Well, I had cancer in 2016 and that really was the start of an amazing shift that's just continuing mm. um yeah to unfold and then someone mentioned the book women who run with the wolves i've mentioned that before by clarissa pinkola estes and i had been given it 12 years ago or more mm. by a woman i was in this sort of shamanic healing group at the time which i've sort of forgotten about and i didn't i, I was obviously wasn't time and then i, I got a second book so an hour of two <laughs> And I started reading it and it just everything you say, do you feel there's a particular time now that more? I mean, I know our ancestors and women gather. Do you feel that there is a particular time on the planet? I feel like, you know, that feminine is rising. We're, we're sort of there's that shift of coming into balance again. How do how do you see all of that or how do you understand what's happening right now? Yes, I, I do see that happening right right now. In fact, our last circle, um, my full moon fire ceremony um, was on Saturday night. And oh, the the energy in the circle was just immense. I feel it's happening right now with this moon, with this eclipse um, going into the new moon with the solar eclipse. Um, I think this is almost like a, a a catalyst or a catapult even for for the divine feminines to be really standing in their power um we're all different we all move in different ways and we all move at different speeds um so there may be some of us who are still holding on to that seed but we know that it's there and there's some of us that may be really launching into these projects and sharing um and that's all perfect that's all happening all at the right time um, and it's wonderful. It's wonderful to see. So, yes, I do believe that the divine feminines are absolutely uh, remembering who they are. They are remembering who they are and they're having that courage now to having shed a lot of that trauma that was holding them back. Mm. The courage now to stand, stand in their power. Mm. yes and I and I can see it I can see it in the circles these past six months of of um so sharing with women I've I've just seen the most beautiful beautiful journeys uh yeah it fills me with joy oh, so yeah a... yeah it's time oh. now it's happening now I believe it's... yeah <laughs> when you say oh, God, I'm getting so many shivers when you say it because I literally listened maybe a half an hour before this to somebody talking about it's the solar eclipse on the 8th of April, isn't it? And they were talking about this period, mm. particularly from the 8th of April to the 12th of May, like the, but the 8th, I think it's something like 5,000 years and such a sort of a, but it's sort of, as you said, it's happening now there, it, you know, that it's really, I suppose, yeah, catapulting. I can, feel that I yeah. suppose can you yeah the sort of an energy that I keep saying I keep feeling this rumbling beneath my feet for the last one it's like just coming up through and if you're sensitive like how how do you find like were you always as a child 
if you trace back, do you feel there was always this, like, how would you describe yourself as a child? Like, would you say you've returned oh, to your yeah. childhood or you've sort of kept that alive in you all the time? I so yeah, interestingly. So I'm now when I introduce myself in circles, I'm now having the courage to introduce myself as a, as an intuitive, an energy intuitive. I I feel my all my life I've I've sensed energy and I I have an awareness of of timelines and I see see what pans out and I see which direction is better to take personally and also if I connect with someone what maybe their um, journey should be for better if they if they choose. Um, and I think I always had that inbuilt as a child. I, I was always a sensitive, um, prophetic dreams and listening to my inner voice, you know, which I'm now um, uh, able to confidently say that, I, you know, it's spirit that guides me. Uh, when, when I was a child, I wasn't so sure of that, but I had this voice inside me that was strong and it led me, it's always led me right, this voice, this guidance. It's never failed me ever. And I've taken the most absolutely courageous leaps and jumps throughout my life, especially in the last few years, without knowing what outcome, uh, what was going to happen on the other side. Um, and I've I've listened to that since childhood. Uh, so I consider myself, I don't consider myself particularly gifted because I do believe that we all we all have the ability to listen to this voice. But I consider myself lucky that I was a child who just chose to hold on and listen to this voice, perhaps more than other people did, perhaps. Mm. Um, but I did. And I knew that I had to listen strong. I don't worry, a little interference there. <laughs> um, so I, I like to... Uh, I like to be where I am now as a result of having the the courage to listen to listen to that inner voice to listen to spirit because sometimes it wasn't easy sometimes it would tell me to do the contrary to what society was telling me to do um, and it took great courage um, in my younger like in my early 20s to 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 listen to spirit to listen to what was I was being told to do rather than go to university and get a job I was being guided to do other things so you know it, it was actually quite a um, diff difficulty at times as well mentally I think I had spent a few years um, swinging a little bit about what shall I do what shall I do because you want to make the right decision well I, I suppose I did so mm. So, yes, I feel yeah. grateful that I did now. <laughs> yeah. And did you, you obviously, I mean, yeah, very brave, very brave. I identify in the way that I now feel it's, I've started to remember that I was that very intuitive child that shut it down. Uh, um, You know, and that's just the way, you know, we all have different lives and journeys through it. But did did you have a lot of support or do you just feel there was just it was very strong in you is you know or was it nurtured um, well no I don't think I I received any um any spiritual support um growing up at all really it was um I um yeah I'm I'm, I'm thinking on it I'm thinking on it and it's it's interesting um so no it was something that I very much developed on my own so I very much had a deep trust in in I don't know I think I just felt such a strong connection to a deep love um mm -hmm. inside me around me that it was it was easy to easy to trust um mm -hmm. but my my childhood I was um very much introduced to the fairies when I was young by by my mum who's who's originally from from Wales wow. um she's she, Susan Bridget she was born on the 1st of February on Imbolc um, oh. and oh. Um, so we have a strong Celtic connection through both my parents actually um, mm. and I think my mum almost half joking in, in a way but kept like sort of a belief in fairies and Celtic sort of folklore alive when I was young growing up but but only on the sidelines nothing nothing mm -hmm. Too something, strong. Yeah, something. Yes, obviously, you've just reminded me my grandmother on my father's side is Bridget and I have uh, felt her recently. It's funny. I've mm. always felt my 
grand, well, not always, but my grandmother on my mother's side, but more recently, she sort of appeared. They are appearing, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> it sounds yeah. strange to someone listening, but I'm I'm really feeling. So have you always felt that connection? I mean, you're obviously uh, with the fairies but in, and your intuitive voice, have you felt a connection with, yes, spirit and people who have passed? I suppose I always have really, but yeah, I think there's times where I kind of asked really to shut down, years where I asked to shut down more than others um, because it's very overwhelming. And, you know, the spirit world doesn't come with a guidebook, you know, like like parenting <laughs> doesn't come with a guidebook and how to commune with spirit and stuff. It doesn't come with a guidebook. So it's a very confusing uh, link to be able to link into sometimes. But I've been very gifted in recently. I've spent the last year um, working with a psychic medium and she's she's a wonderful woman um, here in Lincolnshire. And she works very much in the same way I do in a very sort of gentle intuitive way rather than a structured way mm. and I knew mm. when I knew I I see it's funny how these things find you because I never would have actually looked up go to a de psychic development course but um we found each other and she asked if I wanted to join on, on this workshop she was doing and it just felt right but uh, over her lifetime and she's had a very strong guide since she was a child and um, her guide and her have de developed this course of how to train your awareness so she doesn't tell you what to do she asks you to find your awareness into your your abilities mm -hmm. and um, through her guidance I've managed to find a lot more control because that's quite an important aspect of being able to have your say in in what control you have and things um how do you and mean also, that, sorry Laura when you say control um so being able to open up to spirit and also be able to shut down okay. and also so if past ones are coming to visit you you, you perhaps don't want to be open all the time 24 7 allowing everybody in because you want to <laughs> you want to have some policy. <laughs> 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 you want to have some peace and quiet and privacy at times and um i think it could be too overwhelming if it was 24 7 I, and, I, and i do believe that there are some people out there that are open 24 7 and it's um, it's very very overwhelming mm. uh, and we can um, look at like hospital visits when when people become too overwhelmed uh, mm. which is a um, sensitive sort of subject in in my past as well because um, I I had the journey of um, watching my dad um, open up psychically in a, in a way that was too fast for him. So sometimes referred to as a sudden Kundalini awakening. Mm. Um, and it happened too fast um, without enough grounding. And he actually ended up um, going to stay in a hospital for some time with some medications because um, it was it was uh, too much of a shock. Mm. And um, I was young, I was in my early adulthood as 21, 22. Um, I'd also received some sort of... Um, uh, I, I'd, I'd received um, some messages actually to try and avoid him going to the hospital, but this never, this never worked out. Um, so what will be, will be, but um, mm -hmm. I, I, so I had that experience to be very cautious about any potential um, channelings or gifts coming my way, getting stronger and uh, knew that it was important to really seek grounding and, help from other people who who uh can speak to spirit as well um because it can be it can be overwhelming and there's uh there's good energies and there's not so good energies out there sometimes as well so having the power as well to know that you are in control um mm. and, and what to do when you have the the, lo the past loved ones come over and convey messages, but then some who were a bit angry. So it's important to know how to how to close down and ask them to return to source if they want to as well. So, so yeah, yeah ha having that awareness um, helps massively. Mm. So, so yeah, <laughs> yeah. It sounds like I mean, do you sense I sort of listening to you and even from my own experience that everything that happens particularly well, as you get older like me but when you, you can look back it's great to be able to look back and say oh I can understand now why 
that had to happen the way it did you know that everything is, isn't it everything is preparing you for the next step and it's something that I'm still really I'm feeling more grounded in but I I don't know have you felt that all your life that sort of or is it now you're saying okay maybe I couldn't do that maybe like with my father or whatever but I understand why because I needed to learn like absolutely yeah. yes no you I think you are you are blessed with a life that is is that is here to teach you the lessons that you you need to learn and um, as long as you go through life understanding that things come as lessons rather than try to you know put you down or something then then you can you can you can feel lighter without you know thinking that things are trying to suffocate you emotionally that you go I see this as a lesson now what what can I learn from this how can I go forward with this awareness so yeah it's, it's a frame of mind I believe that um that helps um because yeah throughout my my life I, I I used to have anxiety and sometimes even panic attacks as well because of just not having that uh, awareness of like well mindfulness and how and how to see see the world um um you know it's not too heavy so having that power to control your mind to say i you know i see this as a lesson i you know i'm going to get through this um yeah it's been 15 years since I had a panic attack or anything like that or really were um, suffocated from anxiety we're, we're, we're emotional beings so we get all sorts of emotions come up you know all the time and, and that's and that's normal and we, we come here to experience emotions I believe yes. um, but to not get completely swamped by the waves is is, um, is I think half of the journey <laughs> yes for sure I think well I don't know I'll just say from my experience I think I had a lot of years where I suppressed a lot and I think most of us as a human being yes you do we do suppress this is the system or the world we've grown up in and then when you start to allow yourself to feel which I believe is now for me the only way to live alive feeling everything mm -hmm. but as you said you can I can feel that I think I always had a, I could feel a lot and then it's like you have to clear a bit of a backlog if oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm still like oh my god I'm still clear I don't know if I'm still clearing a backlog or it's just the the experience of what it is to feel like can, yeah can you talk because particularly I think anyone listening I mean you know this whole experience of anxiety and panic attacks is that how you would describe it that it's it's sort of emotional energy that is being sort of suppressed or how, how do you look at it? Like, how, you know? Yeah, it's an interesting one. I, I do think that I would classify myself as one of the people that feels more intensely. So, um, and, I, and I think you make that as a soul choice before you come, you, you make a soul choice to, to perhaps to feel these emotions on a scale of one to 10. I'm going to turn it up to 10 for this <laughs> lifetime. <laughs> I'm really going to go on the roller coaster. <laughs> um, and, and with that comes mm. immense joy, you know, the most pleasure and joy that you can experience but yeah then then we get all the other emotions as well um and yeah so anxiety panic attacks um i think also is linked to um severing almost our spiritual connection at times um in our modern day societies we've we've lost a lot of link with with nature with spirit and with our tribal community um and that i be firmly believe will aggravate massively um, anxiety and panic attacks mm -hmm. um, because um, panic attacks is, is, is almost like a fight or flight you know response that we don't feel safe mm -hmm. and um, I believe that spirit keeps me safe I have a I have a devout faith in me to, to spirit that can't be severed and um, I therefore do not fear death in, in a way. I mean, I, I don't wish it to come, um, but um, knowing that the spirit world continues and life continues uh, after we leave physical bodies eradicates a lot of fear for me. I think I had a big turning point when I um, 
many of us, I think, on a spiritual journey will encounter Dolores Cannon's books and work. And um, she has the book, Is It Between Death and Life? Um, and that was a huge turning point for me. I think it was about 2015 when I read that book and it just completely eradicated the last of any sort of fear I was carrying, uh, just to know that there's a purpose, there's a purpose to my life and, um, you know, not even death can, <laughs> can, mm. can, can worry me in a way. So, so anxiety, um, I, I think can be very much eradicated I believe with with mindfulness uh, with sort of connection to nature to spirit and to your soul really and to your soul purpose and what you were here to do which mm. I believe we all have something even if we're not always aware of what it is and it's not not a problem to not know exactly what am I meant to be doing <laughs> <laughs> we can get caught up in that too isn't it um I found I remember Wayne Dyer it was around the time because for me cancer really was an awakening I I can remember oh, yeah. it. it was like quite a now if I look back quite sudden and then well everything fell apart and you know you, that's well it did fall apart through that but I remember like you said just various just various people I found um, Anita Morjani the book Dying to Be Me and uh. that really opened up that sort of awareness it was just like a big yeah breaking open of um just who I was and I was going to say there's something about Wayne Dyer which has just um left me but it was yeah I was on that that um track as well I've just lost it there but so when you talk about if for if you were like you're very young to have that sort of strong and I know you said you've always felt it like if for someone I, I often feel that because of the weight, particularly in Ireland, of religion and everything, it turns so many people away from the sort of institution, which, but as well as doing that, it has turned them away from the connection to, as you say, spirit and nature or whatever way. How, how do you, if you meet people, younger people or older people who are sort of struggling, as you said, with anxiety or panic attacks, how do you, how do you talk if they feel, well, I don't have any, you know, I'm not for any sort of faith or anything how, how do you open that up in a conversation or do you uh yeah it's something I'm probably developing more confidence to speak about my connection mm. to to spirits um but I, I I do believe there's quite a typical trend to kind of <clears throat> like you say turn your back on orchestrated religion initially so you know renounce God and and the, the structure and the church and everything and then discover actually that there is a there is a faith, but it's perhaps not what I was taught in school necessarily. Um, so I tried to use a language that is far removed from organized mm. religion because uh, that helps. I talk about the universe. I talk about spirit. I talk about inner voice. I think that's quite quite a strong one. And sometimes I don't even talk about spirituality as such, but just about you and about <clears throat> what what your voice is telling you to do what your heart is telling you to do um i give a lot of uh, yoga and meditation and that will involve just becoming still enough to listen to your to your inner voice and therefore i don't necessarily need to mention spirit or, or god or the universe or anything but it is really just about becoming still enough to to listen and to calm actually an overactive mind be, to become more aware to become more present um because um in again in our societies here we are so rushed all the time we we rush here we rush there we're we're always you know we've got a, an hour in the evening to put our feet up on the sofa to watch netflix and before we have to start again tomorrow and um there's not enough time in our culture to anymore to um just to be still and listen and when we look at other cultures like in the east it, it, it seems to me that the whole life is a ritual um and you're present and you're aware of self and you're aware of others so much more and, and that's kind of again another thing that's been severed over here in the west um so feeling that safe um, environment either in yoga classes or meditation classes or in circles where all of a sudden you can drop you know the 
adrenaline and the fight or flight and you just feel safe and then you can develop more self-awareness and 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 then I mean it probably took me years to develop a um more of a connection through spirit but it started through yoga and still in the mind so a meditation and um not everyone will love doing yoga classes and so you know that's why i like to offer stillness in various forms whether it's meditation guided meditation breath work yoga dance uh being in okay. nature yeah wow you do a lot yeah. so has all of this <laughs> just evolved over time so in terms of what you do all the different practices uh nature's always been a big part of my life I I grew up always running around I was blessed actually in both houses we lived in in my childhood right next to the woods so I would disappear out the front door and be in the woods all day, all day when I could picking blackberries and uh, um, I was also part of the scout movement so cubs and scouts so I was from a young age um going away on camps lighting fires uh, making bivouacs and stuff so just being like having that self-sufficiency in a way to know that I can go into the wilderness and, and, and light a fire and find something to eat. And, you know, that a house mm-hmm. is a beautiful place to live in, but you don't necessarily always need a, a house. You just, you, you need your, your self-awareness more than anything. Um, so, yeah, I, I very much value nature in, in, in stillness and healing. And, um, I do have a project at the moment which is aimed at teenagers um, because um, we're seeing a lot of children and families kind of choosing to not attend mainstream schools anymore for lots of various different reasons, especially since, again, the lockdown and um, school being a very overwhelming place to be, um, especially for teenagers. And I was noticing that a lot of teenagers, not necessarily everybody, but a lot of teenagers were choosing to not attend school, uh, choosing home education, but being lost perhaps in their bedrooms or in their homes, um, doing everything on a computer screen and um, socialise. We are social beings. Socialisation is, is a huge point, but teenage years are a, are a difficult period for for socializing at the best of times not without all the added um anxiety and trauma we see in our society sometimes so i have a project um called turning wild which i run with with my partner and uh it's aimed at teenagers we are based outdoors so we have a workshop out of doors in a private woodland and we run debt um, home education days for teens sort of 13 to 17 year olds where once a week we'll gather we'll start by lighting a fire putting something in the pot so we're cooking a, either a stew or something that we've foraged and it's called turning wild so basically we take everything from the wild and produce something so that could be what we're foraging seasonally to make a brew um we talk about the healing properties of all the herbs that um we can drink um we um we create all sorts of things we um so so we have anything from the wild bramble willows we'll weave we'll make baskets Uh, my partner's a green wood worker so together we'll help teach the children how to carve spoons how to cut make stools we have the old pole lathes so we turn the wood and um um so we 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 spend a lot of time crafting and um we're we're in nature we're crafting which i consider very healing we're connecting with like-minded individuals of a similar age um and then also i bring in my also emotional awareness um i talk about what it's like to experience big emotions and how perhaps we can overcome those on an individual basis because everyone's different um you know that could be just taking a moment to breathe it could be taking a moment to meditate it could be um you know finding what works for you in the the best way for you calling for help if you need help um so so yes it's sort of um hopefully the way i see it a remedy for overwhelming teenage years um being in nature crafting being amongst 
like-minded individuals and sort of mindfulness aspect as well because our teenagers are tomorrow's adults and um these young so a lot of these young people are very lost in the world and um sometimes um there's a brilliant quote i like to to use sometimes from the wonderful lee evans uh, energy updates and uh, he said sometimes the the when children are feeling lost in this world, it's because they were here to create a new world. Mm. Um, and so it's again, like finding those like-minded women who are rising, but I have um, also an, an area of interest in nurturing um, these young people growing as well. And um, it's not just the girls, it's the girls and the boys um, because this, they are very special souls. And um, just giving them that freedom, that wilderness, that connection to discover who they are on their own terms, really. And perhaps just to pass little nuggets of wisdom here and there that they can choose to take on board or, or leave. But, yeah, really just create a space for them. And, um, yeah, I feel very, very privileged and very lucky that we have um, yeah, a group of people that um, love the sessions that we do. And, yeah how did that so is it like are you working with is it like parents of children who maybe themselves sort of felt you know this isn't working the education system is that how it's sort of evolved and how have you yeah. found that the teenagers themselves are responding like what do they say or how have you found how they've changed as a result mm -hmm. or did they share that with you yeah, it's um, it very much is a case of the schooling system is not always um, the right environment for a lot of these more sensitive souls, especially. Um, and uh, we're noticing. I think I think a few years ago, I remember seeing a quote for home education since lockdown has gone up something like eight hundred percent. It's probably far more than that now. Um, so we've had a, a big exodus almost of um, children leaving schooling um, institutes, but what, what is the alternative out there um, if they're not attending school? There's lots of, there's lots of things happening in home education, like forest schools, many, many forest schools and many great education groups growing uh, it's, um, and many possibilities to do the old uh, exams rather than in school. Uh, so it's a fascinating movement to mm. be a sort of a part of. Um, but um, I wanted to bring like a little niche that I would noticed was missing because my daughter's coming up 14 now and um, there is a lot of primary school um, aged groups and the kids in primary age really do need to just play they learn through play mm -hmm. and being um, using their imagination creating and that's great uh, teenage years are different though and um, if there were any um, groups out there they tended to be indoor groups um, and a lots of gaming groups and things like this so I was hoping to find uh, a group that would get the kids off the screens and out into nature and I couldn't really see a lot of that happening so I thought I'll use my resources to um, to to create what I think would be a beautiful thing, and um, yeah, my my daughter attends, and it's it's linking it's linking those souls who are, um, well, yeah, call, calling them in and um, seeing them arrive together and flourish in the in in the outdoors and you know with the fresh air and using their hands. Um, I have sort of written a curriculum and it's called the I am curriculum geared to empower young people um, to know that I am enough in myself, you know, with um, empowering them to know that they are able to create things. So if they need a stool, they know that they together we can create a stool, they can create their own stool, they can create a spoon um, they can weave, they can make baskets, um, and also they can master their own emotions as well. I, you know, they can control big emotions and things. So, yeah, it's, a, it's an empowerment, um, basically. Oh, sounds amazing. Giving yeah. them the, the gift to, you know, know that they, they can look after themselves, because I'm not sure the other options in school are always um, empowering people in, in, mm. in, in all areas of life. So... So, yes, mm -hmm. yeah, it's um, no, it's a big, 
it's a big um okay, yeah so yeah exciting you know it brings me back before I got um I was diagnosed in 2016 I worked in a university for 10 years but my job was primarily going out to secondary schools in the country for about ten, I visit thousands of schools talking uh. to students about going to university mm. and I loved it initially because I loved the freedom of being on the road I loved meeting young people I just loved that age group and I just felt a very strong connection with them but and I think I'm not saying it was part of before I got sick. I can remember I felt a lot of stress for a lot of reasons, but one of them was meeting the stress in a lot of these teenagers because the system yeah. is all about getting into university. And I was like, I can't keep talking about this. Like, it's just not this is not resonating with me anymore. It's just too tunnel there was no holistic view and I'm not saying every school or every teacher was like that but it was just what I met because I was meeting them at a point when I have to make a decision about the next stage in my life yeah. and many were saying I don't know or I don't want to do this but um, you know I'm being told that if I don't I won't get a job and where are the jobs there's this constant mm -hmm. search and it just sounds I can remember just feeling there has to be you know that suits certain you know, it's not saying, you know, it, 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 it's, it suits some teenagers because maybe, yes, there's certain things they need to do and they want to train in that. But for a vast majority, it just feels like, you oh, know, yeah, that this that there has to be another way. Like I felt that I kept saying there, and I knew that even, yeah, nearly 10 years ago, I I don't know if there's something similar. I, I've heard of a woman in America, Sherry Divband. Did you ever hear of her? She set up no. Aramis Creative Learning, but it is very intuitive based learning for children because she herself, um, her own children as well, had, you know, are very intuitive in the way she sort of grew up herself. But it's it's beautiful. It seems to be it's it's. Do you think that particularly since we went into lockdown, is that where it came out of for you that that period you were seeing this in terms of um, like with your own children, just a lot of the stress there? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that stress that you talked about of um, teenage years and um, I remember it myself, mm -hmm. like, like I already mentioned that. Uh, I must go to university. I must do this, and um, mm. they they feel that very deeply, more so than I think we can be aware of sometimes. Um, but I was blessed actually um, to work for some time um, in a project called Agile Learning, which is it, like you mentioned, is, a, is an American program, um, and Agile Learning just means that you follow the um, it's like child led. You just you just follow what what the child is ready to do or not do at, at each moment to moment because every moment's different. Um, and I, for me, it was really the only only way to work with someone because I don't feel like you can be a dictatorship over a child. You know, you're equal beings, and just because you've had a few more years on this on this world and acquired a bit more wisdom than the than the other one doesn't mean you can shove it down their throats in, in a way. <laughs> yeah. Um so yeah, so I've agile learning is something I'm trained in and it's okay. it's very very child led and you just you just work with the with the child to see what what you're going to be able to just drop in in a very sort of Montessori kind of way. You're kind of equipped with a large um, bank of knowledge and resources, you know, even if it's not apparent. Um, but then what the what the child is um, enthusiastic in in that moment, because basically all all of us are enthusiastic beings to learn. Mm. And uh, the schooling system, I think, does sometimes take away that enthusiasm to learn just by the stress and the timetable and the regime so when you take a child out of that environment and you just let them find their own natural curiosity then you can drop things in like oh you know you can make a maths equation out of that curiosity or, mm -hmm. or you know or we can channel that to um, uh, make a bee box you know or a bird box or a bee hotel or you know um, mm -hmm. so it is it's sort of facilitating um, and sort of encouraging off the um initial energy of the person that you're working with yeah that's she talks about that as well like she said even in a classroom you might have a child on a swing like the can't sit still or yeah. <laughs> you know and I know I don't 
know the gosh we've gone off on this but it's so interesting it's funny because it was a passion of mine before I Uh got sick it's just you're reminding me of it now and I've sort of felt what I would have I don't have children but I have nieces and nephews in my life and I can just see that like if someone was to say like this is where I've often heard people saying, well, that's all lovely and well and good, but how do you cater for that on a larger scale? Do you sense, my feeling is, well, we're, the way we're moving is going into more smaller, more decentralized. This is the sort of future, whereas a lot of people say, but you can't manage all of that. But I think all of that probably has to for those who want it and want to leave it will probably just say fall away but Mm -hmm. you Mm -hmm. sort of the new being built alongside what is there and then it's your choice really isn't it it's not like saying you have to leave school and and go out and you know but it's it's about choice really and options isn't it for people the way they feel called to live yeah, absolutely. I mean, I have two children. I have one wild outside of school and I have one who <laughs> loves school, in school. You know, he re- he really relishes the classroom environment and the routine and he loves the learning and he, lo- he loves learning quite fast. So he'll uh, devour a maths book and then he'll want the next one. Um, so it, it is just unique to each individual because not everyone fits in the same box. Uh, yeah. not, not everyone has the same way of learning and the same um, appetite for sort of equations and, and books and things so it's uh, just allowing that that choice like you say mm-hmm. it's def- definitely a choice and and yes I would love to take away the constraints of the walls of the of the of the classrooms um, to have a bit more fresh air more more freedom um, I would be curious as well. I'm always curious about taking away the um, restrictions of ages, you know, because in um, in schools we typically see, say, 30 children of the same age all lumped together, um, which is assumed to be appropriate for teaching them education. But actually I think coming from a, a – a tribal community when you just when you take away the youngers and you take away the elders you get an imbalance and I think that's what greatly disturbs the um, secondary school teenage education um, because we have such a a predominant adolescent um, energy in, in leaving well some schools are like a thousand teenagers you know and at lunchtime the teachers disappear <laughs> and you don't <laughs> and you don't have the elders or the youngest to sort of balance their energies uh, so therefore the, there's disruption there's competition there's mimicking what they have had for their their parents do to them acted out on others and um, yeah we see upset we see bullying I think for that reason so I would love to actually see mixed ages um, all through through life really um, when I've done education products, projects for, well, my daughter's 14 now. So for 14 years, I've been doing various educa- alternative education projects and nearly all of them have involved mixed ages. And the balance and the harmony that comes through that uh, is, is wonderful. You get the um, older children wanting to nurture the toddlers and then you get the toddlers looking up to the older children everyone is kind of taught on an individual agile basis um so yeah of course you couldn't have one teacher and 30 pupils um in that sort of dynamic but um yes just um finding more balance in in how children are nurtured definitely i think is something that needs to happen yeah i really um yeah, when you say that, that I just feel that so strongly, the sort of different age groups together, like I even noticed it um, during lockdown here as well, where I would have been calling to, I live here with my mother and I was calling to a neighbour, she's 100 now, and I was doing oh. her shopping and, and it was the first time in my life, probably because I never went back into probably the system as it was, you know, as I was before, because I just after I got uh, diagnosed, because I just felt I can't, I'll die like it isn't. I cannot. I have to find another way to live. Um, But I remember spending time with her because I suppose everybody had more time. And I thought, God, this was so 
nurturing and enriching just to sit with someone older and this gift of time to give her time and for her to share with me Mm -hmm. all of her wisdom from her life you know and I'd say something and and she'd say you think you had it hard she said you have no (laughs) idea what it was like when we and she started proceeded to tell me about not having electricity but also how brave and how courageous women were and men but yeah there's something in that isn't there that oh yeah for the future because we started and you were talking about you know being in circle that just something about that just really that sort of tribal sense feels like it's it's coming you know it's part of where we're we're moving towards or creating it I can feel it nearly it's I don't think you can stop it it's sort of instinctive isn't it that we're not designed Uh, in, in these big you we're seeing that we're paying the price like we we can see it can't we through living in these big concrete jungle and big cities and we're not designed I don't think aren't we not as like it sounds like you're you're seeing that in your own work in your own experience with young people with women yes yeah sort of a common yeah very much so I think I think we are we are severed from nature um we forget what nature's laws are like the seasons Mm. inside a house with walls and electric lights we forget that the days are longer in the summer we can have more energy in the summer and then in the depths of winter we need to hibernate and rest a lot more you know that with with our lifestyles we we can't do that so easily so we become tired we become ill and we Mm. lose our connection with one another um um But yeah, I think in the in the in like the tribal sense, the sort of the tribal community, um, yeah, we would naturally be amongst our elders. And again, another product of our society, um, a lot of what happens is we get um, our. I've got a visitor. Oh <laughs> no, that's you, you, speaking you, of. Let, let you, them join us. <laughs> do, you, do you want to do you want to call Solly back to you? Sally dog. Uh, speaking <laughs> of nature, isn't that just perfect timing? <laughs> <laughs> it is. Happens for a reason. Um, yeah. But yeah, we 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 see, you know, through no fault of their own, parents are um, putting their toddlers and little ones in nursery so they can go go to work. So the uh, nurseries are catering for all the little ones, and then then we see a lot of homes, elderly homes, taking our elders, and so we become very segregated in our society. The the toddlers are sent over there. The children are sent to school the adults are working and then the elders are mm. in a nursing home um so again it's another p- place that we're kind of being robbed of our um you know the balance that would happen naturally in our in our cultures so we, other cultures uh, are still you know still live communally with gen- several generations under one roof um mm. but yes this this brings this brings a sense of wisdom and balance when you can connect all different ages together and that you can share the wisdom of the elders i mean the the young people normally want to oppose the wisdom of the elders that's the natural the, the way it goes where they want to oppose initially find their own way and then sort of return to to more or less what the elders <laughs> were saying but we do, but we do evolve at the same time i do acknowledge that the the elders will always uh, see as sort of a change as as as, as we do evolve together mm. um for the better hopefully <laughs> oh, where would you like to see it going like do you think that's I sort of feel that's very um yeah just not that it's happening I suppose that is it really isn't it there's no it's not about it sort of comes back to what you were saying about just being in the moment of what feels right now to do and that will sort of yeah. show itself is that how you sort of operate as opposed to saying okay, my God, in five years, we need this. No, just what is showing up and what needs to be, yeah, what really is showing itself that is ready for the next steps. Because there sort of has to be a readiness, doesn't there? There's no point. It's like anything, trying to shake somebody and saying there's another way. I did that a little bit for a while, I think, after I started seeing and it just doesn't, it's, it's, um, you know, it doesn't go down to us. So well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, I, I think there I think there is a quickening, a quickening of time, a quickening of learning, because um, we see like in the traditional ancient path of yoga, it could take an entire lifetime uh, for a yogi to master, you know, the sense of self and, and the path to enlightenment. Um, but today. I believe that there are much faster ways that people can and reach inside themselves and find peace, find harmony, connection to higher self. It doesn't take a lifetime anymore. Mm. So there's there's a there's a quickening of energy. Is there's almost in a way an instant access, as if you really just just remember. Because a lot of us souls here on Earth now have actually spent many lifetimes. Uh, developing all these gifts and these techniques, and it is actually just now a case of remembering rather than discovering. Mm. Um, so yeah. yeah, the time is the time is right now, and um, and it's also having the courage, especially collectively, to actually take that step of dropping those conditionings, those traumas, and go. Oh, I can actually step out this skin now. I've always had in a way that there's there's this sense that we've kind of always had the ability to do this but why haven't we done it before you know that you know so that there is a sense of it is the right time now it is the right mm. time and we've got the awareness and we've got these younger souls coming all the time who are f- courageous and they just they just not going to take any <laughs> any problems anymore they're just going to go no we want a different way um, yeah, it feels like that, doesn't it? It does. If ever I was in any doubt and sometimes I hadn't seen because we were sort of all locked away for so long, sometimes I'm going, I don't know what young people nearly think anymore. And it's interesting. I'm meeting my nephew tomorrow. I haven't seen him in the long time. It's his birthday. He's 14 and he's a very 16, very gifted, very gifted at music, very I'm just really interested in talking to him or listening to him or just hearing what's going on in this world because I've sort of felt yeah yeah, that it's really it's really important to listen as well but just to to sense I I, it's given me I suppose the more I've talked to people who have children that age it's sort of given me a renewed hope in the sense that they are much more aware and capable and brave and you know then maybe I thought because mm. it's... oh yes yeah I mean like it's again along the lines of the sort of home education mm. world um, I'm seeing quite a lot of teenagers just refuse to go to school in and and um, unfortunately they're kind of being labeled with um, you know difficult behavior challenging behavior these are disruptive pupils and I don't see it that way at all I see them as courageous souls who are just putting their foot down saying this is not acceptable you're not going to treat me like this anymore mm. uh, because they don't resonate with um, the the schooling system um, mm. so yeah that's why I feel passionate about creating spaces for these souls to be in uh, because they are having they're courageously going I, you're not gonna put me in this box anymore yeah I know yeah. not easy and it's the only way it changes I suppose isn't it I've I've heard of similar maybe not as much because I'm not in that world but I have heard from certain people the same thing with their teenagers where they're just going no you yeah know, there is another yeah. way I keep saying that with everything there is another way there is always another way and I yeah. think <laughs> isn't it we have to be sort of yeah more open to that can just I'll we'll we'll sort of wrap up soon but I just wanted to ask you when you were talking again about working with that age group and that sort of emotional um sort of how that can sometimes be challenging as well so yes there's courage but if there's this um how how do you because I just think it's I've come across that how do you support um, like what sort of things do you share to help that age group of any age group, but particularly that young age group to navigate that whole world of the emotional um, waves that come at us? Mm. Well, I think actually choice, giving them the choice it, um, because a lot of life steers them. You, you must do this. You must do that now. You must do this now. And actually just giving them the awareness that they can just go, well, stop. I'm going to I'm going to take some time out. I'm going to listen to what I need. And it's really that. I mean there's there's a plethora of sort of breathwork, mm, mm. meditations and um self-awareness um, and maybe movement when they get agitated. Uh but I suppose really it stems from 
listening to your needs, becoming self-aware. If I think if we were all taught self-awareness from a young age, oh, I think our society would be so different. Um, so it's like recognizing, first of all, what emotion am I experiencing? Am I a bit short-tempered today? Uh, you know, because we have hormonal changes as well at this age as well. And, you know, it affects both boys and girls. And uh, learning to recognize, oh, am I feeling angry? Am I feeling uh, tetchy? Am I feeling sad? You know, all of the emotions are valid and that's absolutely fine and normal and natural to feel all of these, but we've got to not pretend that we're not experiencing these emotions. So really it's, it's, it's self-awareness and it's that control that you have of saying, stop, I need time out. I'm not going to go to my appointment today. I'm just going to, um, um, you know, do some self-care um, but that's also um, um, cultivating as well the wanting to do stuff when you are when you have got your energy back and that you are going to have options to do things when you've got the energy to do them as well so yeah it's a, it's 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 been a gentle guide bent gentle guide and try to set by example try to come honestly and if I come with a, an emotion I try to say to the group look I am experiencing this emotion today I'm going to try to you know maybe I need to do something to maybe I need to do an exercise to get that emotion out so I can better be part of the group today <laughs> yeah I love that I think you said that earlier my god how empowering is that just to I think that's so, as you said, there's so many techniques and things we can all find that will work for us and we're all different and some need to move. I've noticed I do yoga as well and movement often is because I, I, I study astrology and I have a lot of stuff, even though I'm Pisces, and I have a lot of planets in Aries and, and I, I never wow. understood this sort of because it's they sort of nearly battle each other and I can be stop start and it gets very yeah, it can be challenging. So I notice now that movement is needed more, but as you said, it's to sort of to 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 find that in your own life, and even to say, I think they're the most important things you said that to know that you have choice and to honor and listen to that inner voice mm -hmm. and whatever yeah. that is for you. We don't need to label it, but there, everybody I think can relate when you stop and can listen. We all have that inner instinct that just knows, doesn't it? What if when we're given the space, what is right or what isn't right for us, and yeah, I think so. I think so. And I think it's so easy to lose that instinct mm -hmm. when you're told what to do so much of the time instead of actually to stop and listen. What mm -hmm. do I want to do? What do I need to do, actually? Mm -hmm. And, and then, think, uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, no, and, no, and, no, then, yeah. <laughs> and then also the choice of what shall I do? What can I do? You know, after ha taking check of what that awareness is, because um, you I mean, still today, you know, I might acknowledge how I'm feeling and I might say, oh, I think actually I'm going to choose now to have a rest day or I'm going to actually choose to get some more stuff done. You know, so then it's that choice of what you do with your self-awareness as well. Yeah, that's really empowering. My God, I find I, I still battle with that because there's an old programming that will say, no, you need to be busy doing, doing, doing all the time to be of value. And yet. I only had that recently. I ended up going to an acupuncturist and I hadn't been for a long time. I've done other things and I could feel it. Everything was just go, 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 go. I, you know, and 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 I was sort of being shown you need to. I actually got a speeding ticket as well. That one. <laughs> and the minute I looked at it, I knew I said, <laughs> OK, OK, I'm getting it. <laughs> Slow down. So what is that sort of giving ourselves permission, isn't there as well? To uh, sort yeah. of to just to make a different choice it's um... yeah and it, and it is the listening as well and it's you know it's amazing what the universe will present to you to get you to listen and to learn and to be more aware yeah I've had several lessons this past year as well about slowing down and if I wasn't slowing down I was made to slow down like with yes. some various illnesses that came up I was like oh, okay I'm meant to be in bed <laughs> <laughs> yeah as a rhythm I think you talk about that as well isn't there rhythm is just just really and when you talk about nature to me that has just become such a huge um we're not taught that as you said when you look at nature that was one of my biggest lessons after coming out of sort of all that sort of corporate world is this sort of there is a time to slow down and and we never need to worry this was something I 
I was reading it or somewhere that when we need to speed up, we don't need to worry. The universe will present us or give us the nudges that we it's time. To, I, I've noticed that now when I listen, you know, it's time to get moving action, action. And, you know, the way you talked about a quickening, it isn't action in the way that I was familiar with before, which was almost burnout. It was mm. pushing. It's not a pushing. It's just everything happens very quickly. And there's yes. a lot of activity, but it's actually quite easy in another way. And then there's sort of a quiet period again. Isn't that sort of it to me? I'm I'm sort of learning to move into that rhythm more, but it it feels like as a society, and that's also happening, that we on yeah. we don't find this natural rhythm again. This is why there's so much sort of chaos and Yes, yeah. I I think actually a big lesson I've learned over this past couple of years is that nature has everything for you. It has the seasons, it has the um, the spring energy, the summer energy, the, which is different to winter energy. And actually, we don't need to do much except flow with nature um, because nature provides also like the right things to eat at the right time of the year. You know, we want to be hunkering down in the uh, in the winter uh hibernating with broths and stews through you know warming foods and then we get the spring you know um fruits and vegetables coming out and um so you know there's there's sort of this uh trend almost um and we can we can go to the shop at any time of the year now and buy sort of vegetables from all around the world and um like spinach and lettuces which aren't always in season but to eat spinach and lettuce uh in the winter months will draw a cleansing on the body which you don't actually want to do in the in the winter mm. so just mm. having actually the courage and it takes big courage to actually just stop and just be patient and just to go with nature uh knowing that um like with this equinox and this full moon energy there's a big cleansing on the cells that's happening anyway uh so if you were going to go away and try and do a, a fast and a, an extra cleanse at the same time as uh, nature cleansing mm. you you can actually go into like a, a healing crisis you can shock the body and go too far so actually having that courage to go i'm going to trust uh, the na nature's laws and, and go with nature's laws uh, and mm. eat seasonal food you know so you can't mm. eat too much of one thing at one time and yeah it's mm. um yeah it takes big courage I think yeah yeah definitely it definitely feels like yeah sort of as you said I was saying the other day um even to do with healing myself because I'm a big yeah believer or for myself you know nature is everything I need now to heal in every sense emotionally physically mentally spiritually if we're you know that's a whole other conversation but if you're willing to sort of dig down into like if what is really going on um I had quite mm. a it was through talking to another woman I had quite a big revelation about um grief and illness and cancer and I, I I said you know I'm not even going to be using that word all the time but it was the diagnosis that I got and I really just connected in with that there had been a lot of grief before that I think there's still mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of grief in the collective anyways I just oh, feel yeah. it a lot isn't there there's a huge grieving you know individually and collectively and I met someone similar who had a, a year they said of crying and then they got a dance diagnosis of cancer and it was in the conversation with them, I went, ah, I understand it. I mean, I always knew it was, you know, there was much more to it than, you know, when I always knew what had happened for me, always from the day I was diagnosed. But I started to see as this is just my body's way of clearing. When you talked about cleansing, there, that's just my body clearing this energy that has been suppressed and we've given it a label. But really that's all it is it was a healing yeah. crisis really yeah yeah you know it was I, me getting well like it's I just it flipped it I mean I've sort of known but it was so exciting when I went wow and the way we look at it is so back to yeah. front so yeah. inverted everything is yeah. isn't it 
I mean, the human body is absolutely miraculous in in Perfect. what yeah. what 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 it does, and you know, it's types of cancer they are actually the body's way of yeah, like yeah. you say, he, yeah. healing and uh, isolating you know problems, and uh, yeah, it really is a phenomenal process. And again, trust in the process of the body, and and again, I, my belief that emotions are behind mm -hmm. so many of our physical mm -hmm. problems, and emotionally healing. Um, but yes, no, it's and um, we do unfortunately have a big installation of fear amongst uh, what our bodies are, or what we're told our bodies do and can happen to us. And uh, I don't stick my head into the mainstream media very often, but when I when I do, I'm often hit with um, adverts. Um, preparing you for the end of your days and I just think oh it's a you know what a, a fear an injection of fear that you know you're being told that you're going to be scared basically of uh, what's going to happen to your body or but actually you know you yeah. know taking away those those fear injections and uh, yeah. and just actually trusting and uh, trusting that you'll find your your journey and you know mm -hmm. the people who are there to help you and heal and yeah because yeah, sometimes we need help as well you know yeah. you know and trusting that we'll find those people that will point us in the right direction yeah thank you laura because i think even having these conversations it's not that it's not about it's not even about solving anything anymore. It, it's just about reminding. I think that's been a big thing, reminding we have everything. And like, you know, just finishing up again, I'm just going back to that inner voice and the choice that we have. There has been, I suppose, there is an interest in keeping us, I suppose, away from that voice, that instinct. Like, yeah. I think it's just to remember that as long as we're, we're, we're all often told to be rational and up in our heads. Well, that's where all the fear and all of the the disconnection from ourselves happens. I think if I, you know, just as a message to people, a reminder, the more we come back into our body and listen, everything is shown to us, really, isn't it? Like, as you said, you followed that your whole life, like you bravely and you look yeah. healthy and happy. And I think the more I love to people, it's not, you know, all about being happy, but being real, like and living very real, alive lives. Um, it does always um, it doesn't mean your life doesn't have ups and downs, but you're you're in your power and you can you can find your way. Don't you? Abs I yeah, absolutely. I think you hit the nail on the head oh. there when you highlighted like we're actually not always meant to be happy all of the time um you know especially in relationship dynamics and and, and in life you know um once we shift the awareness from like i'm not meant to be happy all the time but i'm experiencing these experiences to, to learn and if i learn from them you know then then that's kind of where the gratification comes mm -hmm. from really it's like but, the speed yeah. bumps, isn't it? Or going off yeah. the, those things at the side of the road and the car and the wheel and they go, Rrr. it's like, oh, back yeah. on again. So it's just, <laughs> it's how we learn, isn't it? It's, yeah. It, it is, it is how we learn. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah. And it's, there is, however, those, those two sort of different um, places to be emotionally. And we've got the energies that are, heart opening and the the universe opens has a, an expanding energy and if we can stay in those expanding energies which are like the love the peace the happiness the joy the harmony uh, we can sort of easier flow with the with the universal flow and then we get like the anger the upset the grief and, and they're, they're constricting energies and they will actually um you know you you can picture elderly people you know who have lived a lifetime of grief and they even physically become mm. hunched over because it's that constricting whereas if we can actually stay as much as we can in those opening energies, um, heart mm. opening energies, especially, then then we can flow, flow easier Lovely. through life. Mm -hmm. But yeah. again, we, we always encounter those bumps, don't we? <laughs> yeah. And that's it. I think that's to be real about it. Like often when you, you know, when you choose to have your, I, that's what I try and do now. I heard someone saying, if, if I'm making a decision, does it expand me and make me feel sort of more open or does it make me feel tight? And if it's a decision mm. that is sort of a choice that's expanding me, even if it's a little bit scary, that is oh, that yeah. the choice. But you choose this. It doesn't mean, yes, life is a better, you know, you you're literally choosing. I'm getting on the roller coaster and <laughs> I'm going to feel it all. I'm not going to choose maybe the safe down a little stream. You know, it's just that is the way. 
that is life I suppose yeah so look thank you yeah. Laura um have any final words and maybe just as well to just maybe mention where people can connect with you through for all of your work you do some online work as well that's right yeah Yeah. so um i use the name laura lives lovingly and i have a website uh, lauralivesLovingly.com, on my facebook and instagram pages of the same name um i do online yoga as well so once a week there's an online class um and i live in lincolnshire in the uk so i do various events day events and healing events um and i'm very proud actually to say that i'm just opening up my own premises here in in town um so i'll be able to offer a lot more of my workshops um from my own from my own place um and they include mindful crafting things like getting together and making dream catchers again always from nature nature's materials um fermenting foods workshops and why looking after the gut is healthy mindfulness meditation treatments guided meditations and And they're um, doing homeschooling as well (laughs) <laughs> that's oh right yes <laughs> well you're a real example of a brave a brave soul following their path thank you thank you yes we were talking in our last circle actually about um how, i think you even mentioned like suffering from burnout and adrenal mm-hmm. fatigue and, and fatigue syndromes that a lot of sensitives can experience but i do have a real devout belief that when you're on your right soul path you, you're you're being you know, that energy is being returned to you. So it's an uplifting energy that you'll experience, uplifting you and energizing you um, mm-hmm. when you're tr- when you're really sort of on, on the right path. And so I think the more that you feel energized, uh, you yeah. should you should listen to that. Yeah, it is to honor those cycles, isn't it? We just absolutely think, we remind each other and say this. I'm noticing that with people I meet, it's sort of not giving, per- but it sort of is giving permission by saying, well, look, yeah. this is what I'm doing. You know, then this is how we spread this and more and more people, I think, feel it's okay to live as we're intended to live. We are nature. (laughs) Exactly. We're not machines. (laughs) <laughs> it's so interesting how the universe also kind of gives you like a little um, spiral sometimes of just like a repeating thing from the past to see how we're going to experience it this time. So it sounds like you did really well in acknowledging and listening, you know, because could have repeated, you know. Yeah. Thank you, nature. Thank you, mother nature. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you, Laura. It's been so lovely to um talk with you today and I didn't know you know where the conversation is going to go but it's just been beautiful and been yeah so enriching for me and for everyone listening I'm sure so thank you I'll put all of your details as well in the description box if anyone wants to reach out thank you so much yeah I've really thoroughly enjoyed our connection and our time together and yeah I'm just very grateful and again thank you for the experience thank you thank you so much Laura Uh, take care everyone thank you